The first step in this process is to draw a single z-sphere into the canvas. Click Edit, and then move up to Transform and click Activate Symmetry. Simon will use the y-axis, he will click R for radial, and he's going to work with eight points in this case, and then draw in eight sets of z-spheres on top of the original one that we drew. We can click Move to adjust those slightly. And then again we'll draw another set of z-spheres on top of those eight and then again click move to pull those out. So we'll repeat this process one more time by drawing in eight more z-spheres. We'll use move to pull them out and then we can switch over to scale to scale down their size. If you press the letter A we'll get a preview of the mesh we're working on. So at this point Simon will turn off the symmetry, hold down alt and in draw mode click on each one of those z-spheres in the center to remove them from the z-sphere tool. That way he has a place to work on the mouth later on. One of the real powers inside z-spheres is the ability to kind of adjust as you go along and to freely experiment. So at this point Simon's kind of just adjusting these tentacles and moving them around, scaling them to get the exact shape that he wants. So don't hesitate to be a little experimental and, and see what shapes you can come up with. When you're happy with the head and tentacles, he'll draw another z-sphere here on the bottom to be the neck of the character and then we'll draw another z-sphere on top of that neck z-sphere that we created so that we can pull out the torso and then we'll use move just to pull that straight down. We can scale that up at the bottom, give the torso a little bit of thickness and then we'll draw in another z-sphere kind of at the base of the neck. So at this point Simon's going to create some arms. He'll use the z-axis for symmetry this time so he can get two symmetrical arms. He'll draw in two z-spheres for the shoulders and then two more for the arms and then use move to pull those out. We can adjust the shoulders, adjust the arms, and then use draw to draw in another z-sphere to create the elbows. So at this point Simon will open up the adaptive skin pull down in the tool palette and increase the density just a little bit to give the preview mesh a little bit more density to work with. He'll also add in additional z-spheres in some areas where he wants to tighten up the mesh. Adding in additional z-spheres will make the mesh conform more to the shape that you see in the z-sphere model. So for instance, you notice the arm area here is a little bit soft under the armpits. So what he'll do is add a z-sphere in on the chest. And then again to tighten up the shoulders, he'll add in two more z-spheres on the sides there. We can then use the move tool to adjust that. So now that Simon's done building the basic shape of the character, he'll turn off symmetry and work on one of the arms. This is where he's going to build kind of the thick claw for the character. And the process is exactly the same as we've done so far. He'll draw in a few z-spheres, use the move tool to kind of pull them out and adjust, and then preview the mesh to kind of see how everything's looking. Do a little bit more adjusting and adding of z-spheres to tighten up the mesh in some of the areas, just to get the claw to look a little bit more like a claw. And you can see when he added in those two little z-spheres there, you got a much tighter mesh around that intersection. A little bit of scaling to get the size that he's looking for, and again a little bit of move to adjust the shape. Now you might notice that when Simon previews his mesh, you see different patches of colors around the preview mesh. And this is because he has frame turned on, which will show the different poly groups that the z-spheres are creating. At this point he'll adjust the tentacles a little bit and you notice that he switches back and forth between preview and the z-spheres just to kind of see how that movement is updating the preview mesh. Don't forget at any point in this process you can go back to your adaptive skin pull down and change the density of the preview mesh. This just allows you to see your preview mesh at different resolutions and help you understand the flow of your topology a bit better. So here Simon's going to start working on the other hand and he'll do something a bit different than the claw. He'll actually create a few digits here and create kind of a tentacle looking hand for his character. Now as you're working on z-spheres I want you to keep in mind that z-spheres are kind of like working on a wire armature that you would use maybe in a clay figure sculpt. And what you want to do is basically create your base structure. You're not trying to 
create the exact form and shape at this point. That's what we'll use all the more advanced sculpting tools inside ZBrush for. But here we'll use Z-Spheres to quickly and cleanly create kind of the shape that we're going to be sculpting on. So you'll notice that Simon creates a couple Z-Spheres for the hands and then he'll add in a few more Z-Spheres in the intersections. And as we saw earlier inside the chest and shoulders, the more Z-Spheres you add in at those intersections, the kind of tighter the flow of that uh, preview mesh will become. As your model becomes more and more complex, you might want to isolate a specific area like Simon does here with the arm. Now the way to do that is simple. Hold down the Control and Shift key and then click and drag over the Z-spheres that you want to isolate. To bring back the rest of your Z-sphere model, all you have to do is hold down Control and Shift and then just click or tap in an empty area. So from this point forward, Simon's pretty much going to be doing the exact same techniques that we've done up until now, which is drawing in Z-spheres, adjusting their position with move, maybe doing a little bit of scaling. So we'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit and move on. As we speed through this section, basically all Simon's doing is using move to adjust the tentacles to fit them more around the body. Occasionally he'll use draw to grow in another z-sphere somewhere along the chain so that he can get a little bit more bend along that tentacle. Here in the back of the head he'll draw in a few more z-spheres and position them so that we can get a couple more tentacles other than our original eight. And of course he'll pose them just the same way he did with the other ones.